everyone and welcome to Insider Financial Talk Stocks. My name is Alex Carlson. I will be your host today, I'm the Editor-in-Chief of InsiderFinancial.com. And in this video, we will recap today's market action and discuss our game plan for tomorrow. But first up, to get our market moving reports on top small caps, click that link in the description or go to signup.insiderfinancial.com or sign up with your email on any of the pop-ups on insiderfinancial.com. After you sign up with your email, you can then sign up with your mobile number. Mobile is the fastest way to get all of our reports and it works for all numbers worldwide. Simply enter your country code first, followed by your number. For US and Canada, be one plus area code and number. Never begin the format with zero, it will not work. And after you sign up, you will get a welcome email which includes a free copy of the Insider Financial Guide to Penny Stocks ebook. Our ebook, our email service, and our text messaging service are all free service from InsiderFinancial.com. We do not run any paid subscription service, no Discord rooms or Telegram chat groups. And speaking of reports, we have a new report out tonight for subscribers on a past winner that's on the verge of a major break breakout. There's short squeeze potential written all over this one. Best part is that the stock is trading just under $1 and has news in play. To get our report on this NASDAQ biotech, click that link in the description or go to signup.insiderfinancial.com or sign up with your email and any of the pop-ups on insiderfinancial.com. Well, guys, today was a pretty good day here at InsiderFinancial.com. We saw some nice moves in the name in some in the names that we've been covering this week for our subscribers. Uh, two short squeeze names that have been pounding on the table have been CVNA and UPST. Uh, shout out to Ali he said you were right about CVNA and UPST. Good job, man. Appreciate the comment. Thank you very much. So Carvana is one of our favorite plays here. Uh, I've been talking about this one uh, all year, guys. 50% uh, of the float is short. Uh, we got an upgrade today from uh, S&P. Uh, there's been this big argument from the bears is that uh, Carvana is on the verge of bankruptcy. I did my due diligence and the recent capital restructuring eliminated that risk. Today's news confirmed that and on the charts, the next target is 15 is $20. Uh, today here, the press S&P Global Ratings upgrades securitization sponsored by Carvana due to continued strength in loan performance. Reduction, uh, reductions of loss assumptions on certain outstanding securities securitization bonds reflect out performance versus initial S&P expectations. So again, here, uh, Carvana, the leading e-commerce platform for buying and selling used cars, receives notable S&P global ratings upgrades and revisions of securitization loss op assumptions due to capital structure deleveraging. And that was the key. That's what we zeroed in on, that the deleveraging was the key. And that's what was going to allow the stock to run and squeeze the shorts. 50% of the float is short. So we can really, really see some major major uh, move in Carvana. And the best part is weekly options expire tomorrow. So again, uh, we love option expiration day. Let's see if we can uh, crush the shorts in Carvana tomorrow. Uh, next up, uh, UPST guys, I've been covering this one since $16. 35% uh, of the float is short. Uh, just love the price action. Dips are to be bought on UPST. This one has a lot more room it can run. Next up is GSIT, up 32% today. Uh, nice breakout uh, after consolidating. Uh, it, we got, I talked about it the day after uh, what ended up happening here uh, on Fox Business News, Lou Basenis went out and uh, talked about it in the afternoon uh, as an AI play got the spike. Uh, and then the next day you got some follow through, but you got the nice consolidation here around $4, another spike, and then uh, pull back down to $5. So again, this one's been a great uh, dip buyer and uh, we made new highs uh, here today. So really, really like the price action in GSIT. Last night, I covered uh, Chewy, C-H-W-Y, in last night's video. Uh, just great trade today. Uh, rallied as soon as the market opened. It opened at 35.42, dipped down just 20 cents to 35.23, and then rallied all the way to 37.49. 
great opportunity to day trade today. Uh, let's see uh, what, what could happen tomorrow. Uh, got also a short position in, uh, yeah, there's a short uh, position in GS, I mean in Chewy. So I think we can really also see some more uh, short squeeze tomorrow uh, with also weekly options expirations to, uh, uh, expiring. But uh, the sales were up 14%, 14.7% during the quarter and adjusted EBITDA improved to 110 million from just 60 million a year ago. Their EBITDA margin improved to 4% from 2.5% during the quarter. Uh, adjusted EPS rose to 20 cents versus 11 cents a year ago and the consensus mark of 8 cents. The CEO Summit Singh said our first quarter results reflect accelerating double digit top line growth and continued expansion of adjusted EBITDA margin. Net sales per active customer and auto ship customer sales also both reached new record highs for the company and continue to fuel customer loyalty and spend towards our platform. Full year revenue guidance was uh, for 11.15 billion to 11.35 billion versus a prior view of 11 billion to 11.3 billion. Also last night I covered uh, NetApp, N-T-A-P. Uh, great trade today. We also rallied right at the open, open at 70.30, ran all the way to 72.78. The uh, company announced a $1 billion share buyback. So guys, I'm also, you know, I'm covering swing trades, day trades. All that matters at the end of the day is P&L. Book profits. Don't, you know, always use trailing stops. Don't let a winner turn into a loser. Uh, it, at the end of the day, it's not about being right or wrong or owning the libs or, or owning uh, the bears or the shorts on Twitter or stock twits. It's, did you make money at the end of the day? Yes, we all leave money on the table. Every single trader is going to do that. You're never going to catch all the move. But if, at the end of the day, if you made money, you can be happy. So focus on that. Ignore the noise and focus on your own P&L because that's all that matters. How much I made, the next guy, another trader, it's meaningless. Focus on you and that's it. Uh, today, a uh, nice day today, almost up almost 20%. My favorite quantum computing stock remains QBTS. Uh, they had a PPR this morning. Uh, D-Wave and Interpublic Group partner on quantum-powered advertising optimization. You know, everyone's talking about AI, but without uh, uh, quantum computing, uh, you don't get AI. So QBTS is a great uh, a uh, quantum computing play and the best part is trading at just a dollar fifty so a lot of opportunities a lot of upside potential in QBTS and uh, you know this one here was trading at twelve dollars uh, last summer so a lot of opportunity in QBTS Another mover today is MVIS, uh, up 23% this week. I think this one is, is another one. It's going to keep squeezing the shorts. Uh, as I said, Friday is a great short squeeze day. Uh, you know, if the momentum is there and the day traders pile in, the shorts panic and we can get some big moves. Um, right now, a uh, big short position in uh, MVIS. So keep, your, keep this one on your radar screen. Uh, today, uh, Everyone was focused on AI. Uh, the company it stock sold off on earnings, but day traders came in and bought the dip. I uh, love this price action in AI, and it was really <coughs> what ended up saving the day for AI was Nvidia. Nvidia uh, is still the granddaddy of the AI names. Focus on Nvidia. You know they were buying Nvidia all day. Uh, today. Uh, stock opened at 384, closed at 397, hit 400. Uh, you're going to get a lot of those traders when they see NVIDIA running, they're going to come in and into the other AI names and they bought the dip in AI. So that's what happened today. Let's see what happens uh, tomorrow in AI. Uh, I traded it in out. I'm uh, no position in AI right now. But a couple of earnings plays for tomorrow. First up is Asana, A-S-A-N. 
uh, company uh, announced a non-GAAP EPS of uh, loss of nine cents, beat by uh, nine cents revenue of 152.4 million, was up 26.3 percent year over year, beat by 1.83 million. We got 14 percent of the float is short, so we got short squeeze potential. And CEO Dustin Moskovitz, his b big buying program uh, it kicks in this summer. Uh, he bought 350 million dollars worth last September. Uh, he is a multi-billionaire. I think he's worth like eight, ten billion dollars. He's a co-founder of Facebook, but Asana is his baby. So again, uh, put this on your radar screen today. We have a double top uh, at uh, twenty-four dollars. We break above twenty-four, and this one's going to run. So that's what I'll be watching tomorrow. Uh, next up is MDB MongoDB. Uh, stock is trading more than twenty up more than twenty percent in after hours after the cloud software provider pro, uh, reported better than expected quarterly results and guidance. The company reported Q1 adjusted EPS of fifty six cents, which blew past expectations by thirty seven cents. Revenue rose twenty nine percent year over year to three hundred sixty eight point two eight. Billion, beating estimates by 21.24 billion. Uh, the company's performance was helped by 40% revenue growth in its managed database service Atlas, along with its highest net new customer additions in over two years. Moreover, MDB CEO uh, expressed confidence that the company's developer data platform was well positioned to benefits from advancements in artificial intelligence. Bingo! Anytime AI is, in, is mentioned in a conference call, and when you got uh, you know an earnings beat, you're going to get all the traders uh, piling in. So we're going to get a big gap up tomorrow, and uh, I'll be looking to trade this tomorrow. MDB. Uh, the company also said, uh, uh, what said here, we believe the recent breakthroughs in AI represent the next frontier of software development. The move to embed AI in applications requires a broad and sophisticated set of capabilities while enabling developers to move even faster to create a competitive advantage. The company also issued Q2 and fiscal year 2024 guidance above expectations. So again, the company sees Q2 revenue of $388 million to $392 million versus consensus of $360 million and adjusted EPS of $0.43 cents to $0.46 cents versus consensus of $0.14. Cents. So this is just an absolute blowout uh, report. So again, very exciting uh, 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 news from MDB. Uh, looking to trade this one tomorrow. IOT, uh, Samsara. Uh, almost 7% of the float is short in this one. Uh, they reported uh, EPS of a loss of two cents, that beat by three cents. Uh, revenue of 204 million, uh, up 43% year over year, beat by 12 million. Uh, Q2 outlook total revenue of 206 million to 208 million. Year over year rent growth of 34 to 34, 34% to 35%. Uh, Really, uh, really nice uh, numbers here. And in terms of the total uh, 2024 outlook, total revenue of 866 million to 874 million again, and that is year over year growth of 33% to 34%. So we'll be watching uh, IOT tomorrow as well for a trade. Lastly, guys, is Lululemon. This one has absolutely gotten beaten up uh, in May from 390 all the way down to 328. Uh, we got 3% of the float is short. Uh, the company is up in after hours after posting Q1 results that defied some of the sluggish earnings uh, being turned by ath athletic apparel companies and mall chains. Uh, comparable sales at stores were up 14% during the quarter or 17% on a constant currency basis. Total revenue was up 27% during the quarter, led by a 60% jump in the international markets and 17% gain in North America. Direct-to-consumer revenue rose 16% year-over-year versus 20.3% consensus. Uh, DTC revenue accounted for 42% of sales. Gross margin improved. It was 57.5% of revenue versus 53.9% a year ago, and the expectations were for 57%. Uh, the company opened seven net new company-operated stores during the quarter to end with a store count of 662. 
CFO Megan Frank said our Q1 results were strong as guests responded well to our product offering in all our markets across the globe. A meaningful acceleration in our China sales trend coupled with lower air freight contributed to our better than planned financial performance. We are ple pleased with our momentum heading into second quarter and for the full year is reflected in our revised outlook for fiscal year 23. Uh, good guidance. Uh, stock trading up 11% in the after hours. Uh, let's see how uh, uh, the setup is tomorrow. So again, you know, trade the open. That's where you're really going to get the uh, indications of what's going to happen. Uh, if I see anything, uh, you know, besides our report, I'll send out a uh, email or a text alert uh, to subscribers. But Tomorrow, the big story is going to be our report on a NASDAQ biotech under $1 uh, that we have for our subscribers. To get our report, click that link in the description or go to sign up down insiderfinancial.com or sign up on any of the pop-ups on insiderfinancial.com. No spam. Your info is never shared. Unsubscribe anytime. You can even sign up just to see the level of research we do here at insiderfinancial.com and unsubscribe. It's completely free, no obligations. Finally, guys, Insider Financial and I are not investment advisors. This video does not provide investment advice. Always do your research, make your own investment decisions, or consult with your nearest financial advisor. This video is not a solicitation or recommendation by Seller Hold Securities. This video is our opinion, is meant for informational and educational purposes only, and does not provide investment advice. Past performance is not indicative of future performance. Thanks for watching. Remember to smash that like button, hit the notification bell to be notified when a new video is uploaded. I hope everyone has a great Friday and let's crush the shorts tomorrow. Bye-bye.